First fight since March. How are you feeling? Well, I'm feeling great. Um, I'm feeling great and very positive and uh, optimistic about the future. So, yeah. So. All good. You fought Thompson McConnell last. Um, of, uh, of course, uh, originally there was going to be a rematch uh, for the title, and um, you know now you're fighting Jabulani. Um, how did this all come about? Well, you know, um, I was meant to be fighting Thompson. I ever he was on a break, and um, because of the whole knockout situation, you have to take about 90 days off for something of that sort. So, and um, Golden Glove came with this opportunity to me. And I saw this as a golden opportunity as well. Um, and, I, and I jumped to the opportunity, I took it with both hands. So here we are today. You know, next you got Jabalani McKenzie. Uh, what do you think about him as a boxer? Well, um, you know, I do respect him. He's a very cool, collected oak. Um, and, his, and his camp entirely. So I know they've got a the good experience behind them. And Jabalani has been coming along very well in the professional rankings. So, yeah, I, th I think he is a good boxer. You know, you're obviously jumping up a division. Is this a, a, a temporary thing or permanent change? Well, I mean, I think it would be, it will all depend on the outcome of the, uh, of the, of the fight. However, I mean, I'm not foreign to, to the junior welter division. I mean, when I initially turned professional, I, I did turn as a junior welter. And then back to amateur, back to junior welter. We had about three to four fights. One of them all was the junior welter Tank champ. So, so it, you know, I, I'm flexible between the two divisions, basically. How do you see, you know, when you go to sleep at night and you're visualizing the outcome of the fight, how do you see it going? <laughs> well, I mean, obviously, I'd see it go in my favor. I, cannot, I can never, ever, ever, ever see it go um, the other way. I mean, every day I'm up, I'm here in the gym, working hard. So the last thing uh, I think of just before, just prior to fall asleep is knocking Mackenzie out, you know. So that's the last, <laughs> that's what I think. You know, Jabalani, um, okay, so he's obviously been mentioned by Rodney Berman as someone that he wants to take to America. Of course, you've been in the situation before where you get overlooked in certain situations. Uh, how do you feel about it when you hear things like that? Well, in my case, I mean, I mean, there was an article written about me sometime a while back, and it was mentioned that I'm the black horse of, of boxing. So with that said, you know, I think I have been overlooked plenty of times. And I've always been in a situation where I have to prove myself, prove myself at all times. However, you know, I cannot really complain much. I can only do, I can only do as the opportunities that are presented to me. If the opportunity comes whereby I'm told that I have to fly off somewhere, represent my country, which is my dream, dream um, I'll grab that opportunity with both hands. However, at the time being, um, if they are mentioning McKenzie for, for that opportunity, I think it's a good thing. He's fairly young because, I mean, the word talks about me as well about in, 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 in that sort of uh, avenue. However, I think the age um, aspect of it was not favorable to my, to my favor. Okay, now um, this is obviously something that you've spoken about on social media and everything like that and the fact that you, you won a title. And uh, both you and Jabulani both fought SA champions, beat SA champions, yet no SA title. How do you feel about that? Well, you know, um, I was my, morally I was very much disappointed when I fought Thompson when it was meant to be a title fight and then it ended up not being a title fight. However, BSA has rules, regulations in place that, um, uh, that constitute the Boxing Board of South Africa. Therefore, we have to comply and apply to that. Um, as unfortunate and disappointing it was, uh, I can't really complain much because then it will all be falling on deaf ears. Um, I'll just have to respect the leadership that's there putting all the rules and regulations and then just move forward. However, in terms of the title, um, I do need a title by, I mean, if you look at all the boxes that are fought, you know, I mean, it, it, it becomes a bit of a, of, of a sad one on my side. And you know, this whole thing of Michael being uh, the, the black horse of boxing, 
it, it seems to be sticking on to me. However, I mean, I'm working my, I'm putting my utmost best um, work in everything that I do so that I get, I, I get rid of that. And then I see myself on top of the food chain in, 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 in the two white divisions that I'm operating within. You know, Empress Palace for a third time in your career. You fought there twice, hundred percent knockout record. Uh, when you do it to the big time, so you're not you're not afraid of the big lights and the big crowds. Um, how do you feel about going back to Empress again? Well, um, well, for me, it's it's one of the biggest opportunities because I mean I do view um, um, Golden Clouds to be one of, in fact, to be the biggest promo, uh, to be the promo, the biggest promoting company in Africa. Uh, therefore, it becomes a very, a very big opportunity for me because I know that my fight will be broadcasted probably internationally. Nationally, everyone will be seeing me and the uh, crowds that are pulled in there as well. So it's big corporate companies as well. So, you know, uh, opportunities of sponsorships and so forth are there. And I think given the, the whole setup of, of, of the boxing guy in there, it's also to it, it's very impressive you know you, every time you fight there you know you make sure that you're there to to give your best um, performance ever just going back to the fight real quickly uh you're a southpaw uh mckenzie hasn't come up against many southpaws as a as a professional do you think that might give him some trouble on on, on fight night well i think personally just myself being myself uh, uh, as michael i think i'll give him a lot of trouble uh, not in an arrogant manner, but I mean, I know myself, uh, and I know my work that I've put in, and I know Southpaw Orthodox, I'll, I'm very awkward. And, but I mean, they, his camp knows me because, I mean, my debut fight I had was with one of the guys from their camp. So, and they did, they, and I'm sure they've been checking out my fight somewhere, somehow, and trying to counter counter my, my movements and, and, and the way I come in and so forth. They rate you as, as their most dangerous opponent to date. Is it the same situation for you or not so? Uh, no, no, not for me. Um, well, I mean, Komunisi was meant to be the most dangerous. And um, I, I have had some, I, I've had a fair share of tough fights. Not to say that I'm undermining my, my upcoming op opponent. Um, I've had some interesting and some hard fights and I think he also falls within that basket because I mean his track record also proves that or uh, uh, speaks volumes as well. So I mean I'm not going to take him lightly but I mean um, in, my, in, my, in my view he has not really had a fight that, that a proper tough fight. I mean, I mean um, Kolisi is a tough fight but then when you look at elements building up to the fights there's certain things that i mean i can i can question and, and you know but i'm not really going to get into that but i yeah. mean yeah is this a fight of the night stealing the show contender well if i want to see myself getting to the top i have to be i mean to, uh, the fight with myself and thompson it was a great fight and i also believe that that fight also took um uh, the spotlight so, um, and as I move with my boxing career, I think for me, it, it becomes imperative that every time I contend, I produce the best show and exciting f a fight ever, and uh, make sure that when I leave that venue, I have a bigger crowd behind me for the next fight. You've got, a, you're obviously riding a, a good wave of form, you're very confident in your own abilities. A prediction for this fight? Well, um, I do see it going in my favour, um, and um, I do not see um, my, my opponent really going all the way to 12 rounds. Um, yeah. So if you had to make a, a sort of, a, no, I'm not saying pick a round or anything like that, but you, are you saying the later, maybe the later rounds? Yeah, I think from, uh, from round six, you'll, you'll start cracking. So where the pronto comes in? That's when the pronto comes in. That's when I just get rich and I just become ferocious, man. <laughs> Lastly, just a, a shout out to the people that are going to come watch you and then a message for Jabalani. Um, first and foremost, um, to Ventino's, um, our sponsors, to Infelt, other sponsors, um, Sport Betting, um, 
a remix. So all you guys, um, the show is for you guys. I know you'll be there in numbers. So um, I really want to dedicate this whole fight to you guys as well because, I mean, your support and everything that you do for me as a boxer, I mean, it does take me to greater heights. I mean, I get sick, I need supplements, I need training gear, I need this and that, and you guys are always there to see to all that stuff. So much appreciation to you guys. And to my fans as well, everyone that will be there, to my unborn child, to my baby mama, peace, I love you, baby. And now to you, my fellow opponent. Um, it will be a crack of a show, and I do pray that God um, protects us both with, uh, in the fight. And um, it's not going to be an easy fight for you. Um, coming out guns blazing, my man, so please keep those hands up or else you'll be <laughs> out and cold. Thank you very much. <laughs>